Hey, uh, let's try a ray diagram with a convex mirror. So the rules are very similar to a concave mirror, but you're going to notice a few little twists, just enough to kind of keep you on your toes, but not enough to throw you off, hopefully. So let's check it out. As usual, um, or as I've shown you before, we've got uh, kind of our relative points that we want. We've got uh, these two dots here. I'll label this one the focal point, this one the center of curvature. This is going to be my object. And then this is my principal axis that I have here. So let's go ahead and start drawing some of the rays that we use to identify uh, where the image is going to be produced. Um, and we'll borrow from what we've learned before. So number one, we will take our ruler and almost always the one people like to start with is this ray that goes uh, parallel to the principal axis and hits the mirror. So let's try that one. There we go. Comes in, hits this mirror. And now we'll remind ourselves the difference between a convex and a concave mirror is the whole idea of the focal point. So when this parallel ray hits the mirror, remember convex mirrors have this characteristic where they reflect the ray away from this virtual focal point. So I'll start by drawing this ray this way so it bounces off and heads off up in this direction indefinitely if we have to extend it later on we will but we'll see if we need to do that so there's our first ray the ray that goes parallel to the principal axis reflects away from this focal point here all right second ray you might remember that there was a ray that went through a focal point in this case we can't we can head towards that focal point, but you'll see that we're not going to actually get there. But let's just line up our ruler with the focal point and the tip of the object. If we think of it that way, it's, it's pretty much the same idea as what we did with a concave mirror. And now we'll use our ruler starting at the tip of the arrow, head towards the focal point, but boom, cannot get there. So hits the mirror, and now. I don't know if you'll remember this one, but it should reflect parallel to the principal axis. So be careful. It does indeed reflect, so make sure you show it bouncing off the mirror, and then it'll end up going along this principal axis this way. And again, it kind of goes off forever and ever. If you want to keep drawing it or if you find the need to keep drawing it, you can. So there's our first two rays. Third ray... And again, this is very similar to the one we drew for a concave mirror. It's got to do with that center of curvature point. So it is going to be, if we connect our um, ruler with the tip of our object and the center of curvature, let's get it lined up pretty good there, not bad. If we do that, then a line that heads from, eh, let's do a red line. Uh, a line that heads from our object out here towards the center of curvature will hit the mirror and it'll bounce straight back. See, I got smart. I left my ruler there this time. So it was headed towards this mirror. It's hard to tell now, but when you see it happen, you understand this ray in red was headed towards the center curvature, hit the mirror and bounced straight back. So now we have our three rays. They're not exactly the same as the previous mirror for a concave mirror, but there's number one, there's number two, and there's number three. So if you go back and look at what the rays we did for a concave mirror, not exactly the same, but certainly not totally changing the rules. All right, again, parallel to the principal axis, now it reflects away from the focal point, not through it. Okay, is that a big deal? Yeah, it is, but you can keep track of it. The second ray uh, heads, in this case, towards, never quite gets to the focal point and reflects parallel to the principal axis. And then the last one heads towards the center curvature and bounces straight back. So we have our three rays and a problem because these rays never actually meet. You'll notice that they are diverging they're heading away from each other you could trace these forever and ever they're just going to get further and further apart so what's a person to do here 
Well, I wish I had done this in the first place, but I am going to draw these lines. I'm going to match my ruler back up with this reflected ray, and I'm going to draw a dotted line. Because it's not a real ray of light that gets back here, this is behind the mirror, but I can draw a dotted line extended back here that goes through the focal point and maybe even a little further if I wanted to. But that dotted line represents to me a virtual ray. It's not a real ray of light that went through the mirror, but if you were looking from this angle up here, if you could put your eye up here, if you could look from this direction here, and this is your eyeball with your eyelashes, you would say that the beam of light came from back here. So it's not that it was really there, but it looks like it. it's a virtual ray. We traced it back from the reflected ray. Let's do the same thing for the other ones. The key here is, I'm going to say this carefully, so you might have missed it the first time, I trace back the reflected rays. So for example, I will not line up my ruler here and extend this line. That's the incident ray. I don't want to do that. I always have to identify the reflected rays, like this green one is a reflected ray. And I'm going to trace that back to see where that one looks like it's coming from. Now you can see what's happening. I do get some intersection points here. So I can kind of get a sense of what's going on here. The rays are meeting here. And then the last one, and this one, can't really make a mistake here. The incident ray and the reflected ray kind of follow the same line. So we just connect there. And now I take my dotted line and boom. All of these things meeting in one spot as if it was planned. And now I can take, I'm not going to even try to draw a line here. I'm going to take a arrow and I'm going to show that I get an image being produced here. The tip of the image is up here. The base of the image is down here. So I'm going to draw my little arrow just like that. Pretend that's perfectly vertical. And so you can see... Again, the rule at the end, sometimes I go too quick and I think students miss this, but I want to be clear. The intersection point up here, that is the location where our tip of our arrow is going to be. The tip of the arrow will be there, right? The intersection point, tip. Where's the tail of the arrow? Well, the tail of the arrow is always on the principal axis. So once you know where the tip is, then you just take your ruler and draw straight up and down, tip where these intersect, tail right on the principal axis. And it's a vertical line, almost like the one I drew here. All right, so convex mirrors, totally different. No, not totally different than concave mirrors, but certainly going to have to bend the rules a little bit that the idea of how you draw the three rays is essentially the same. But now we end up with these virtual rays that come together. Oh yeah, what was the whole point of this? We need to come up with the three characteristics. So what are the characteristics of this? Well, think of it yourself while I write down the word characteristics. Let's see, the first one was size, bigger, smaller, or same size. Hmm, don't need a ruler to tell me that this thing is smaller. Second rule. Sorry, second characteristic. Uh, that was that one that was like, uh, what did it say again? Oh, yeah. Some people call it the attribute or anyway, the, uh, the attitude, sorry. Um, remember, this thing could be the same orientation as the original, like it is here, or it could have been inverted or upside down version, like we have seen before. In this case, same uh, orientation, so we call this erect. And finally... Was the, oh yeah, what type of image do we have here? Um, and clearly, well, I hope it's clear now. You can see, oh yeah, we've seen an example of a real image because the rays really intersected to allow us to draw our image. Now they virtually intersect. We had to trace them back behind here. So is there really an image back here? No, nah, there's no light going through this mirror and producing an image here. However, if you ever have a mirror like this, 
go check it out in a store that has their security mirrors, you will see an image in there. That's a virtual image. You can still see it. All right. Nobody says you can't see virtual images. Definitely can. Um, and that virtual image just looks like it's back here, looks smaller, and it's erect um, compared to the original. So there you go. That is um, ray diagram for a convex mirror. Uh, just when you start figuring out like the rules of the rays, then you get a new different ray diagram that kind of changes the rules ever so slightly. But I'm just going to try and give you a few examples that you can make your way through, and eventually you'll get comfortable uh, drawing ray diagrams. Why? To get these characteristics, to make predictions about what kind of image we're going to produce.